We are now having 40 plus thousand new cases a day that if you look at what's going on of people not avoiding crowds, not wearing masks, not paying attention to physical distancing. President Trump will be holding another large campaign event in South Dakota this weekend. The governor told Fox News that we won't be social distancing. I would not be surprised if we go up to 100,000 a day. And so I am very concerned. Who would be? Who would wow. be stupid enough to, to brag about not socially distancing? I don't know. <laughs> Who would be that stupid? Apparently. It's unbelievable. No. Uh, that new video is out from the group Republican Voters Against Trump, and these videos are just becoming too easy to make. <laughs> Uh, the group is also spending $10 million in swing states to air ads that feature testimonials from Trump voters who now want to elect Biden. Joining us now, one of the strategists behind the group, editor-at-large of the conservative website, The Bulwark, Bill Kristol. Also with us, Democratic strategist and co-host of the 2020 Political War Room po podcast, James Carville. Good to have you both. Um, Beautiful kitchen, James. So I'll start with Bill Crystal, though. Uh, Bill, the ads, I mean, Trump writes them and his followers who don't want to do basic science and keep Americans safe, they write these ads, too. Yeah, but I think the key thing is to get some people who supported him in 2016, obviously, or who stayed home in 2016 to not support him this time. And I think it's, what we've tried to do is get regular voters to send in their little their testimonials about why they're not doing it. They do there's a lot of research showing that voters respond more to people like themselves uh, explaining why they've changed their mind than people like me screaming and yelling at them that they were wrong all along. We need to give people permission to change their mind. And that's been our effort of Republican voters against Trump. And, and I think we've had some success. If you look at the polls, there's clearly some movement among Republican-leaning independents and even some skeptical Republicans away from Trump. Uh, but, you know, we, on your discussion earlier, if I could just take one minute on that, which is so interesting about it, it, Trump's likely, very likely going to lose if we have a free and fair election in which everyone can vote safely and securely. But that's not so obvious. Mitch McConnell's holding up the federal funding to help people vote by mail. And are we confident that Trump won't use the executive branch in September and October? Uh, in ways to try. The director of national intelligence, September 15th, terrible mm -hmm. report he's produced on Joe Biden. Ukraine. Remember Ukraine? What was that about? That was about getting dirt on Biden. Why did it fail? Fake dirt on Biden. Why did it fail? Because Bill Taylor and Marie Ivanovich and Fiona Hill and John Bolton, for that matter, were there because there was a whistleblower. Is any of them there? Are any of them there now? No. Are there constraints in place uh, on the intelligence community and on the Justice Department? I mean, there are good people there who hopefully will prevent Trump from using the executive powers to really distort the election. That's what worries me also very much. And that's where, again, one thing that prevents that, Congress. But look at the Republican Senate. That's why it's so shameful. I mean, it's so shameful that they're not being serious about checking Trump now, as opposed to thinking about, gee, maybe in September we'll, we'll separate ourselves from him a little. He could really distort and uh, prevent a genuinely free and fair election in this country by his use of the authorities of the executive government, power of the executive branch of government, which we've seen him, he's been willing to try to do. Hey, James, it's Willie. Good to see you. I see you're still basking in that national championship. And if things keep going the way they are, we don't get a season. You might be national champs for two years here uh, yeah, down there in Baton I'll, Rouge. We'll release the um, bar so we can be national champions for two years. <laughs> Well, you might you, you might hold on to that title for a while. So we haven't talked to you in a while, James. Uh, so I'm interested in your view of where things are right now for Joe Biden, for Donald Trump. Joe Biden has consistently now showed double digit leads nationally. He's leading in most of the battleground states. You've got Republican senators, incumbents on the run trying to hold on to their seats. Wrong track numbers, staggering. Seventy five percent of Americans say we're on the wrong track. Coronavirus on fire in states across the country the movement that we've seen in the streets right now. And yet you have Democrats, I think probably because they felt burned by 2016, saying, hey, we still got four months till Election Day. I'm not counting any chickens yet. Where do you think this presidential race is right now as a man who's run a couple of them? Well, I agree with 
just go scoreboard. I agree with the first two people who say that. I think there's a significant chance he doesn't run. I, I mean, this mm. thing is going so poorly. He's so far back. It, it doesn't even, to me, it doesn't make much sense for him to run. This is the great Moscow Mitch strategy. After Labor Day, we're going to turn on him. That's really going to work. I mean, McSally and Ernst and Sullivan and, and Lindsey been licking his boots for three years and nine months. But boy, come Labor Day, we're going to get some separation. The chances of that working are zero. He is going to drag the whole outfit down with him. Bill and his group, Bull Walker, has been in tens of millions of dollars and meet Kleber Weaver at the Lincoln Project, they're just bludgeoning him every night. I'm part of a group of American Bridge. We spent $75 million in 77 rural counties. He has no idea of what he's getting ready to get hit with. They have a lot more patriots in this country than he ever thought. And people are just outraged, and they're coming together, and they don't care if they're Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative. It's just a wonderful thing to see the way that certain creative, energetic people in this country are coming together to extract this menace from the body politic. We got John Heilman with us, and he's got a question. John. Hey, James. Um, you know, uh, there are a couple things I, I want to focus on with you, and, and I, you, you and I are in the same place in terms of the analysis of where things are right now. But, you know, I'm, I'm watching uh, Trump ads uh, about Biden and the crime bill. I'm watching Trump ads about Biden's cognitive state, and I'm certainly watching the Trump campaign gearing up for an all-out assault on mail-in voting uh, over the course of the next few months. And I ask you this, if, if, if you and Joe, uh, if it turns out that Donald Trump does, for reasons of ego and narcissism, doesn't drop out, um, which I think we all acknowledge is maybe something that could happen, but is not the likeliest scenario, just go through what you think the voter suppression campaign, both in terms of trying to drive Democratic turnout down in key constituencies and trying to blunt mail-in voting. What's the, what are you worried about? The dirty tricks, the negative stuff that the campaign, the Trump campaign could try to do between now and November to do what Bill Kristol suggested a minute ago, which is to try to basically pervert this election and make it not a free and fair election. Let's take one state, Georgia, the state of my birth, all right? Worked on campaigns there. They can't conduct a fair election. You know what, what Georgia has? They have a lot of corporations. And, so, and they got lobbyists. You go to Georgia legislature, the Coca-Cola people, the Delta Airlines people, the EPS, God knows what. Somebody needs to say, you know, you corporate people, get down there and tell that Secretary of State that we want the, our employees' vote to be counted. And you know, I, I, I like Coke, but I can drink Pepsi. I can fly on American Airlines. The, the, the entire structure of the state of Georgia is designed to stop people from voting. And the only people that are going to change this are these big companies, these universities. You know, people can go to Auburn. You know, these five-star recruits, they can go to Auburn. We'll be glad to go there and coach Ogeron, coach Saban. They'd be glad to go there and pick your pocket. But if you can't conduct a fair election and you have all those lobbyists and you don't have people coming in there bringing heat, then people are going to be mad. And they're going to, they're going to find out what's going on. So, I mean, Stacey Abrams is doing a, a, a good job down there, but people need to bring heat on this Georgia Secretary of State and this Georgia governor says, let our people vote. Just let people vote. You can vote for who you want to. Where are these companies? Where is the, the Georgia power? I mean, I, I, they got a plot well, of the whole deal I got that Lake Burton. You better get up. Somebody better get on the stick in that state and just tell these people, we want to let people vote. This idea of having two voting machines for every 1,000 people and voting in the cab and having 200 voting machines for every 500 people in Northwest Georgia. They got to stop this, and they got to stop it now. Mm -hmm. Get on the stick, Georgia. Move. Well, uh, and Mike Barnacle, uh, certainly watching the patterns of President Trump's behavior and his indignation as to how he's being treated every day, it does make you wonder if everything is being done to shore up the elections. Yeah, well, everything's not being done to shore up the elections, Mika. I mean, uh, it's not just Georgia, as James pointed out. And Bill Kristol, uh, my sense of it is, and it's aligned with the, a few people who I really respect, you talk to enough people around this country 
And they're not going to have to count the votes this November. They're going to have to weigh them. People can't wait for November to get here. So what do we do in addition to the things that James just pointed out? The very real threat of voter suppression, especially with vote by mail in various states. Where are the Republican senators in all this? Again, that's another topic. We hear nothing from them. No, and I think James is right about the corporations. There are groups working, actually, to get corporations to put pressure on at the state level. If you're headquartered in Atlanta, you should not be proud to be headquartered in a state that doesn't have, seems incapable of conducting truly free and fair elections, or at least there's real trouble doing so. Um, and you should call Mitch McConnell if you're a big donor to the Republican Party and say, hey, look, we support you on taxes and all these other things, but you've got to help the states run a real election that doesn't call into question democratic legitimacy. In November, but I do worry about uh, about the, what the Trump administration can do. I've been in a couple of scenarios with a lot of smart people where we tried to work out what could happen in September and October. He is president, being having control of the Justice Department, having control to some of the national of intelligence agencies. Again, not everyone in those places, by any means, not not the huge majority of them are corrupt. But at the top, he, he's they've gotten rid of an awful lot of the roadblocks, the guardrails. And could he, as I say, you know, could Ukraine work today? That's the way to think about it. Could some country discover, hey, Joe Biden is corrupt, and suddenly director, and the intelli director of national intelligence says this could be true. It's not just a rumor. It's not just Rudy Giuliani running around. I mean, whatever you think of John Bolton, he said, we, we can't participate in this drug deal. And he managed to get the White House not to participate. And then there was a whistleblower. And the whistleblower went to the inspector general, and the inspector general ended up going to Congress. There aren't that many independent inspector generals anymore. So that's where I think the Democratic House, Pelosi, and, and, and the, can play a huge role in oversight, where people in the government need to be serious, and people need to have serious conversations, not, not letting the president turn this into a third world state where the Justice Department and the Defense Department are used mm. as his personal tools for reelection. I think we can do a lot to stop this. And the good news is the voters are turning, and the public is turning, and even some Republicans are turning. And Republican senators are a total lagging indicator. I totally agree with James. The idea that they can pivot in September is just ludicrous and, and, and get the stain off them. So I'm, I'm reasonably optimistic. I just think we need to be worried because he remains president. Bill Crystal, James Carville, thank you both for being on this morning. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.